In today's video, we're gonna be looking at cinematography when it's the middle of the day and the strategies of getting the best footage. We'll be using the FX30 for this entire shoot. Hey, Brady, how's it going? Howdy. Good, good it's to see you good. here. Guys, this is a new good friend of mine and fellow filmmaker, Brady Bessette, incredible cinematographer. Music bed's been so kind to put us up in this house this week and it's our first time getting to hang. And today we need to test this camera. Hide your face, Brady, hide your face. It's the FX30, brand new camera. And who better than help me put it through the paces than Brady, he shoots on the FX3 quite, and FX6, and quite FX6. often. But, the middle of the day, Texas bright sun. This is literally the worst time to shoot outdoors. I can barely get enough ND to make the shot work. But that doesn't have to stop us from shooting right now. It doesn't? No, there's options. options. Brady's actually telling us that we have to go indoors right now. Why is that? Because middle of the day is actually a lot better time to shoot inside instead of outside with that. Outdoor Brady's right. This is actually can be one of the best times to shoot, but indoors. So Brady's gonna give us some tips today on how to get the most cinematic footage indoors in the middle of the day. And why you wanna be in the middle of the day too is it's nice and air conditioned. It's so hot out there. My feet just got burnt by the pool. Let's go shoot, Brady. I like that idea. Okay, while we're getting our way to the first tip, we got Editor Lewis here in Texas. It is so bright. This property is so big. I got lost in the house my first night and ended up in a room full of bunk beds. Slept there when I actually could have been staying in the master bedroom. This behind me is the guest house. I just hope one day I live in a house like that. Normally when you walk in a room, you turn the lights on. But my first tip, turn the lights off. And here's why. So when you turn on all the house lights in a facility, you're gonna have light everywhere. It's gonna fill in all of your shadows. This contrast between highlights and shadows are what give visual interest in your image. So by shutting the house lights off and actually using the sun coming through your room's windows as your main light source, that's gonna give you these pools of highlights and shadows in your image. So where you can really see this kind of contrast coming in from the light is on, especially on Lewis's back. You can see on the left side of him, you've got this key light coming from the windows. And then on the right side of him, you've got this contrast of this really dark area on his right side of his body. And it just gives a lot more pleasing of an image as opposed to when the lights would just be on and it just being bright everywhere. Let me go turn the lights on and show what that looks like. I want to throw up. This is a point I've made before. That house lighting is ugly. Lighting designers of houses are thinking for utility. They want you to be able to see everything so you're not running into anything. When you can, don't embrace their strategy, which is light everywhere. First thoughts on the FX30? I feel like I'm shooting exactly with my FX3. There's no hesitations coming to it. Like I already know how it works. I yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> So we've got the lights shut off and now we're starting to create this contrast of highlights and shadows. But that brings us to the next point of a placement of where you want to actually place your camera. Now, I'm shooting into the light and you really want to backlight your subject. You probably hear that all the time is backlight, backlight, backlight. And that's true because you can see, especially on his face, you get this really cool wrap of light coming around his forehead, coming across his face. That looks really, really pleasing and it adds to that more contrast. Again, you've got the highlight area on one part of his face, the shadow on the other side. Now, if I were to bring this camera around to shoot front light, all of our contrast is gone and it's essentially having the same effect of turning the house lights on and everything just being washed out and flat, lacking all the contrast. Now, one thing I'll say that's missing from this room is some haze. I was about to say. Yeah, haze. yeah. <laughs> but not, not just because it's cool and sunlight comes through it, haze does a good job of softening light a little bit more also. It acts yeah. as like this 3D diffuser. What did I call it? It was one of the first YouTube videos I ever did. Well, it does this cool thing called beamage. Beamage. It gives, beamage. It gives volume and then volumetric, then the lights of beamage. You can see this Playtex commercial I did. We had haze in the room. You can see the beams, very oh, really? similar to yeah, this. Yeah. That's the one thing that's missing, but overall the light's pretty soft in here. I like it. Yeah. I can't complain with this being natural light in the middle of the day. Let's go to back to the house. We want to show you, if you're not in a giant basketball court, how to get good light indoors during the day. Hey there. I came out here to remind you that I, I, I don't live that mansion life like you might thought I have with this video. I live with garbage cans. Today's video, we're talking about camera gear. And when we buy new camera gear, we get insurance. We have insurance, right? You don't? Not having insurance for your camera gear is kind of like driving without a seatbelt. It's like making a smoothie without the lid, intentionally. Intentionally making a smoothie without the lid. But that's where PPA comes in, the Professional Photographers of America. 
This is an incredible community of over 34,000 photographers, and they have $15,000 of camera gear insurance for your beautiful new camera to help give you peace of mind when you're on set using all your new gear. But your membership doesn't just stop there. There's loads of more features. They help you navigate contracts, how to figure out all that legal stuff that can be overwhelming. They're kind of like, like a dad who's gonna help you run your business. We run an academy, The Art of Documentary, and we literally send our students to the folks at PPA to help them navigate all that contract and legal stuff, because that can be overwhelming at times. And if you sign up with a link down below, it'll get you $25 off your PPA membership. Go check out PPA. It's worth it just for the camera gear insurance alone, but there's loads of more bonuses that come along with your membership. Now let's go back to talking about cameras. Brady as a DP, you find the last location here. We have plenty of windows. Every room has like 18 light switches and I just push them all off. It's like an airplane control board. We got some gorgeous lights here. All right, so what I would look for is one hour window light is a nice soft key light. One, one hour window light? One hour window light? Isn't that what you just said? Did I say that? One hour window light. One hour window light? I slept three hours, give me a break. The first thing we're gonna look for is our key light window because our window is gonna be acting as our key light for daylight spilling in. So that's one thing I'm looking for. The other thing is a corner because corners shooting into the corner of the room is gonna give you depth in your image. You want a deeper image with more visual interest. Ooh. Okay, we got a mirror there that's gonna add even more depth to our frame. So that's an option, or we got the office chair that's over here in the window. Should we get Lewis here? Let's do Lewis here. Oh, a practical light. Quick tip, practical light is any light that's gonna be in the frame here. So to add to a little bit more interest, maybe add a little rim light as he's sitting down. Take a seat, Lou. This looks really awesome right here. And one thing that we always like to say is like really embrace the silhouette. Don't be afraid to darken up your subject and really accentuate the profile of your subject sitting there because a lot of the times a common mistake is you wanna expose for your subject, right? So you brighten up your whole image and then the window is completely blown out. By stopping down and really accentuating with a silhouette, it can still give you a really, really great image. And then if your frame is really dark, you can add stuff like a practical, like you see in that frame left, a little warm light. It adds a nice pool of light on the inside of the room. Just bring up a little bit more level. So sometimes the option is just to go full on silhouette with the giant windows. Embrace the exposure for the outdoors inside. There you go. We're gonna go jump in the pool. We've been dying to do this all day. Thanks to our editor and model, Lewis. It's tough being a model. It is. <laughs> Thanks to guest DP, Brady. Go give him a follow. Incredible cinematography tips over on his channel. He's shooting amazing stuff. He's not a YouTuber. He's a real DP. Music bed. This has been the most crazy, coolest house I think I've ever stayed in in my entire life. I don't think, I know. This is insane. Thank you. Love you guys. Go check Music Bed out. I have links down below in the description.